Hello and welcome to this new video series for a behind the scenes creation of a commercial video game going from the very beginning all the way to the end uh, representing uh, the story of Age of Atlantis which is a novel that I am currently writing and editing and now I am in the plans to create a video game. So. What I'm going to be doing in these videos is show you the process of creating this video game uh, and actually uh, figuring out exactly what I want to put into the game. Now, the content that I'm actually going to be providing you isn't going to be absolutely every single aspect of the game making process. So things like graphics and music, that will all be done off recording. Uh, content, um, again, will be done off recording, like the story, for example. The core game mechanics and the in-game editor that I'll be using to put scenes together, that's stuff I'll be recording, but everything else will be done off screen. And of course, um, because it's story driven, I don't want to obviously uh, show you any spoilers in terms of the story if it's something that you uh, wish to play at a later point. So in these videos it's going to be primarily based on uh, my uh, novel which is which isn't going to be released yet so it's still um, being edited by myself and this get and this game is probably going to take uh, just as long if not slightly longer because of course it's my very first uh, game to create effectively um, from uh, scratch. Uh, well, not necessarily entirely from scratch, uh, but it will be pretty close. I'll be making my own game engine, uh, putting together all of the core mechanics, etc, etc, etc. So most of it is going to be um, pretty much from scratch. Now I'm going to be using a low level framework called CAR, which is written in a language called HAIX. Um, some people, or it's primarily pronounced HAX, um, I think, but I pronounce it HAIX, generally speaking. I, that's just the way I roll. Um, I pronounce things differently sometimes. Um, so, first, before I actually get started and show you around um, of what I've done so far, um, you may have noticed that I started more of a written tutorial series on my website, lukesalmon.com. Uh, so let me uh, show you that just for the moment. Uh, so that's lukesalmon.com. If we go on here, um, we've got these tutorial series, Twins Bar Basic Handling. Uh, event handling and this is the last tutorial that I wrote obviously and I uh, d basically describe how you can uh, use the event handling system uh, within Twinspire uh, just to get you to grips with the uh, the utility library that I developed for myself that makes it uh, easier to uh, start up a car application because some of the uh, car, the si some of the systems in car, I'm not overly keen on. I don't um, like the idea of having um, multiple functions to operate on a single event listener. I think that's a terrible idea. Um, so Twinspire um, basically attaches one single function to each event listener as long as it is available. And we use that um, inf that data uh, to determine th things like keys down, and, uh, you know, uh, mouse movement and stuff like that, right? So um, to show you that on GitHub, then, um, if you wanted to follow along with the series um, of videos, uh, I'll just show you. Uh, in fact. I I'm not going to bother logging in right now. Um, I'll just show you uh, what it is. So here it is, here, Twinspire. Um, 
So Twinspar is a car based game engine using Hakes. Uh, so we'll be uh, using this to create a 2D video game uh, engine. In fact, technically this is the wrong place. Um, it's actually core. This bit here, this this one here. This is the the core framework provides a very basic of application building based on car. That previous. Um, That previous thing that I use here is actually out of date. Um, uh, this application it, it again is out of date. This uh, a lot of it uh, car has changed quite a lot in the past um, couple of months slash years. I mean, it, as you can tell, it's a year old. This is. Um, it's got a GUI in there, but it's object oriented. Um, and I haven't bothered to, um, you know, uh, move any of this. I haven't bothered to update it or anything like that. Um, I don't even know if it works anymore. So, but when it comes to actually building this game, anyway, uh, the idea is to actually show you the exact process of building it all. Um, pretty much from scratch anyway. So we're going to be using the bare bones. This core framework is, is simply there to make it easier to build application using car. So if I then open Code Studio, which is what uh, I use as my coding environment, um, as you can see from my previous tutorial that I just showed you on Um if you've been reading along, then you will be familiar with this code. Uh, th you'll notice that um, what we have is basically a very basic rectangle, uh, which is colored white, which is filled on the screen, and we can move that rectangle across the screen using the WASD keys when eventually it actually loads. So here we are, we've got this rectangle. We're able to move it left, right, up and down, etc, etc, etc. Now, the kind of game that I want to make Age of Atlantis is actually going to be a 2D side-scrolling platformer with a focus on story. Um, so the kind of game that I'm thinking of making is going to be um, we'll be able to move left and right on the screen like you would expect in a side-scrolling platformer. You'll be able to interact with other non-player characters. You'll be able to advance the story. Um, and there's going to be lots of different aspects as well. Um, it's not going to be much of an action platformer because there's not going to be much action going on in this game. I don't intend to put in any combat as such. But um, a lot of it's going to be based around uh, exploration, story, um, uh, creating this story, um, being able to interact with different objects, maybe uh, collect artifacts along the way, maybe that um, those artifacts can be used to present as evidence in a diplomatic conversation later on in the game, for example um and uh, lo lots of different aspects these are the kinds of things that i'm thinking of putting into the game obviously um that that's just a very basic idea that i have for the game there will probably be more features as we develop it over the next year or two or however long it takes to make this game so let us get uh let's let's go forward with this game let's actually do something that's a little bit more interesting obviously this isn't exactly um interesting we're just moving uh, the rectangle left and right up and down um we're not going to have jumping in this game i don't think it's appropriate um so first things first what i'd like to do is have this rectangle look more like a person i suppose you could say um so the next thing i'm the 
one thing I'm just going to do is just set the uh, height to something a bit more appropriate um, to make it, well, not m any much more like a person, obviously more like a rectangle, but um, at least in that sort of uh, shape, I suppose you could say. Um, so obviously it, it is more vertical than square, if you know what I mean. So, hmm, I'm thinking that size is a little too big, perhaps. I mean, we'll, we'll figure this stuff out when we actually start using real world units, but this is just something to test with. Um, maybe 220 and maybe the width can be 80 or 190 or something like that. Let's take a look at that. And as you can tell, take, uh, compilers these days are slow. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, th that, this looks reasonable. This looks quite reasonable. I like this. So, I mean, this is the fastest target Hakes actually compiles. To, uh, it's what we get. It's what we get when we um don't actually use something like C or C++, but whatever. We'll, we'll deal with it, we'll deal with it. It's probably faster than actually using Visual Studio C++ um, with loads of different libraries and engines and all manner of different things, but still. Um, so we're, we're moving a white rectangle on screen, that's fine. So next thing I'd like to do is define a sort of ground on the screen so when we're moving this rectangle uh, left and right what we want to be able to do is have this rectangle fixed in a specific position on a sort of invisible ground obviously we don't exactly have an actual ground to represent at the moment because we have no graphics for the game right now but uh, what what I'd like to be able to do is have this uh, rectangle be fixed uh, vertically and only be able to move it horizontally right so we would like to define a ground where would we like this ground to be defined that is a good question so let's just say for the time being just for just for hypothetical reasons uh, that this ground is going to be located about 80% uh, down the screen, let's say. So let's say our ground, which is gonna be a float, um, is going to be equal to uh, system.windowheight times 0.8. So that's 80% down uh, the, the, um, the, uh, w the client, the client's uh, current height, not the actual window height, including the border. We're talking about the actual client height. That's um, this bit uh, from the bottom side portion of the window frame itself down to the bottom um, but minus the border. This bit here is the border itself with this title and this logo, right? But Everything in between is the client. That's the client. Um, it's called a client. Uh, the the client dimensions. So that's what we're looking at here. The client height. Um, not technically window height. So that is a little misleading. But we'll 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 deal with it. <coughs> So once we've got this ground, what we'd like to do is fix the Y position, this Y, um, on the ground. So the Y position is actually, um, when we, let me run this again. Uh, let's run this again a minute, I'll show you. So. The Y position is actually this um, 
the t this top bit here, not the bottom bit. Um, so what we will need to do is, in order to actually fix this at the specific 80% point, which is about here. Um, so this is the 80% point, but our Y position, if we set the Y position here, instead of it, at, instead of this rectangle actually being located at around about this point, it's actually going to be located around about here. So what we, what we want to do is minus the height of the rectangle. Um, so uh, let's define a height. Again, we'll use real world units at some point in the future, but we're not we're not doing it right now. Um, so our height we set as 190. Um, and what I'm then going to say is y is equal to ground minus height, right? And then what I want to do is get rid of these um, uh, if statements for moving it uh, left and right. Um, sorry, up and down even. So that we only have our A and D keys uh, where we're moving the uh, character left and right. And when we um, take a look at that, we'll just pass in height there, we might as well. So when we go ahead and actually see what that looks like, we'll have our white rectangle uh, at the bottom of the screen um, and we're no longer able to move up and down we can just move left and right um, that looks all right um, maybe it should be more like 0.75 maybe 75 percent down the screen so 0.75 something like that um, we might have gravity in this game i'm not sure I think it, it's going to be mostly, we're going to be mostly operating on the ground anyway. There might be um, cases where we might uh, move uh, upstairs in like buildings, for example. But I don't, I don't think we'll need gravity to operate that um, per se. It's, it's not, it, this isn't the kind of game that's going to have heavy physics. Um, going to be more focused on story which is one of the reasons why i uh, was thinking of making a 2d side scrolling platformer because it's very very simple um and and i'm not very good with maths if i may be honest well we will do some maths in this game but we're not going to be making anything complicated um it's going to be a quite quite a simple game it's going to be heavy on the graphics side of things i think but obviously those kinds of graphics, I'm probably going to be hiring an artist to actually do it. But anyway, this looks good. Um, this is quite a, a reasonable height from the bottom of the screen, I think. Looks good until we, of course, um, maximize the screen. And now it doesn't quite look right, as you can say, as you can uh, see. The reason it doesn't quite look right I mean, actually, I suppose that's all right. But there's a bit of a problem with this. There is a little bit of a problem with this. Why is it a problem? What, what, what's, what, what's the problem? What problem can you see? Can you see a problem? I can see a problem. Problem is this. When we maximize the window, um, our rectangle is moving uh, slower um, and it's taking a lot longer to get to the other side of the screen than it is in this size of a client. And I'm holding down the right, um, the left uh, key, i.e. Uh, the A key to move the rectangle to the left and it's taken a while to get back. Um, obviously we don't have a camera system in place to actually zoom into the uh, the actual rectangle but point being is we have this rectangle in the middle of the screen right and when we maximize the time it takes to get from this side 
of the game client to this side of the game client is shorter than it is when this game window is maximized. Now we can fix this quite easily. Instead of rendering this rectangle on directly on the foreground, which is uh, directly using this G2 buffer, um, what we would do is we would actually draw it to a back buffer and then draw the back buffer on the fore buffer, right? So the principle is quite simple. Let's run this again. Take your time. Okay. So the principle is quite simple. In car, we've got the image class, which we can use to define a buffer region, right? So we could have this buffer region that uh, fits at the same width and height of this game client when we initialize it for the first time, right? And when we initialize it, we would also draw this white rectangle in that image. And when we move uh, the rectangle left and right, we would um, update the image, i.e. the back buffer, and then uh, tell car to draw that image. Right? Now, what's the benefit of that? Well, the benefit is that the actual game resolution is independent from the claim from this uh, window resolution. When I maximize this window resolution, currently this uh, rectangle depends on the resolution of this window. In other words, when I'm moving it across from one side of the screen to the other side of the screen, it is ultimately dependent on what size of this window it is in order to determine how long it takes to get from one side of the game window to the other. We don't want that. So one way to fix that is to have a back buffer on which this rectangle is drawn and we resize the image whenever we maximize this window so that regardless of the resolution of the window, this white rectangle, when it's rendered, will have the same time it takes to get from one end of the game client to the other end. And that's exactly the behavior we want when modifying the, the actual window resolution and not the game resolution. So this is what we're doing when creating a back buffer. We are defining two kinds of resolution. One is the game resolution. When we modify the window resolution, the game resolution doesn't change. It scales and stretches. Now that might not sound like a good idea in practice, but the reason a lot of games do that, um, not necessarily 3D games, but 2D games, the reason why 2D games might do that is because you don't want your um, tiles, for example, especially if it's a tile based game, you don't want your tiles and the entities within your game world to be moving slower than what it would otherwise be in uh, windowed uh, based um, uh, in a in a bigger window space like this, for example. Um, the other option is instead of actually maximizing the back buffer is we create lots of black borders around the main um, game uh, buffer, but that doesn't sound like a good idea at all, especially now since a lot of uh, monitors have very high resolution. So we don't really want that. We want to actually take advantage of all of that empty space. We want to actually fill it all up and we want to be rendering it, rendering our game in all of that space as we possibly can, uh, especially now with, um, like I said, high resolution monitors. So, 
how do we go about doing that? Let's go back into our uh, file explorer and I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to call it buffers.hx. So in this buffers class, um, I'm going to have obviously a class called buffers. I'm going to do my uh, procedural style initialization as I do with pretty much all of my code these days. So static builder.build, .build, so that's a macro. Um, I explained that in a written tutorial on my website, which you can go and check out um, if you want to learn a bit more about macros. Just a small introduction to it and find out exactly how this works. Basically, it just create it just causes all of the functions and members of this class to become public static unless I mark it private. Um, you'll see that more often um, as we uh, develop develop let me try that again we will see more of that as we develop this game further so excuse me so in here i'm going to say var back buffer and that's going to be an image we need to import that so i'm going to say import car dot image and I'm going to have a function that's going to say init. So what we want to do is pass in the initial width and height of the game window when we first initialize the uh, game. So when we go into our main.hx file, what I'm going to do is instead of doing game.init, initially what I'm going to do is say buffers.init. And I'm going to pass in that width and height. So 1024 so that's the uh oops 1024 by 768 so that was the initial um values so the initial value that we're going to be setting to this back buffer is going to have this width and height so we're going to say back buffer will be equal to a new image and um oh we can't do that Double that. No, it needs to be a create render target. That's what we need, um, not new image. Uh, so we'll say, I think actually we can just use create, but I think what we actually need is create render target because um, car in the background actually initializes the, uh, the G2 um, member variable of image. Uh, properly and configure it properly so we need i think we need to use this so we pass in our width and our height that creates our back buffer right so when we go back into our game um instead of rendering uh this rectangle and setting the color etc on this g2 Instead, what we're going to do is we're actually going to get that back buffer. So we're going to say um, var back, let's say, and I'm going to call it, I'm going to get our buffers dot back buffer. And what I'm going to do is just prefix these with back dot. And then what we've got is g1, g2, g4. So when we do our create render target on the image, that's going to initialize and configure these graphics. Um, what we also need to do, um, because this is a separate um, version of this G2, uh, what we also need to do is actually make sure that we begin um, those buffers as well. So buffers.backbuffer.g2, uh, dot begin so we need to do that again um clear true and clear color which is going to be black and again down here in fact i don't think it's a good idea to actually wrap g2 buffers um like that that might have unintended consequences 
So what we will do is um, when we pass in our game.render.g2, we'll actually just pass in um, our back buffer.g2 in here, right? The buffers dot back buffer dot g2 and when we go ahead and actually render the main buffer we'll say g2 dot draw scaled image buffers dot back buffer um, which is just the image itself and the destination x is going to be zero destination y system dot window width and system dot window height so basically what this is going to do is it's going to stretch this image according to the window width and height which is exactly the uh what we want so when we actually go ahead and do all this we don't actually need to reference that anymore so we can just get rid of that um and we'll just uh we don't actually need to change anything in here. So when we go ahead and actually pass in our um, g2 dot our g2 uh, into our game class, we're actually referencing the back buffer. We don't need to keep on accessing the buffers dot back buffer every time we want to operate on that buffer. So let's take a look at the results. Nothing really should have changed in terms of actually rendering the rectangle, um, but what we will or should notice is the image actually stretching. So we can still move the rectangle left and right, as you can see. When we maximize, as you can see, the rectangle is actually scaled, and the time it takes to get from one end of the screen to the other is uh, the same. So that's exactly the behavior we wanted. Now, you can probably see another problem, right? So we've, we've fixed one problem. Now we've introduced another problem by fixing the original problem. And that problem is aspect ratio. So our aspect ratio is now off. And this is going to have unwanted consequences to our graphics when we start maximizing our windows and changing the resolution, etc. Now, I'm not going to worry about aspect ratio right now because, um, uh, it, I mean, it's not complicated. It's just a maths problem, um, but I'm not going to do it in this video because of time. Um, it's going to take a lot longer than um, probably 20 or 30 minutes to um, suss that out. But uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to keep it short. I'm going to keep it basic. So we've been able to draw in this video um, our rectangle uh, on a sort of invisible ground. We haven't actually got a ground defined yet. Um, and we've also defined our back buffer, which we're now using to uh, render our rectangle on. And when we maximize uh, the window and minimize the window, um, we're actually seeing it scale up and uh, we're seeing it uh, move at the same speed as we would have expected in uh, any resolution. So I'm going to leave it here for the time being. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hopefully um, I'll be back with more videos uh, relating to this. And next time what we're going to be taking a look at is defining a camera and what and two endpoints for a, for a, a, a level. So we'll have a starting point and an end point and we'll have our rectangle. Um, we'll have a camera that follows the rectangle. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.